Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. This week we have a palate cleanser of positive tech news stories to offset some of the more dystopian trends we've been seeing recently. Firstly, a team at the Korea Institute of Science and Technology have developed the Moonwalk, a wearable lower body exosuit designed to improve the mobility and quality of life of the elderly. As we age, we naturally lose muscle strength, and for many it means giving up activities such as hiking, which may become too difficult. This 2kg exosuit has high-powered actuators on either side of the pelvis, helping to improve balance, and gives up to a 30% leg strength boost. In their demonstration video, the team showed a 65-year-old wearer climbing Mount Yongbong in Korea with ease. The team plans to expand the capabilities of the moonwalk to include additional hip and knee support in the future. In other news, researchers from the UK and Turkey have teamed up to create a new way to detect glaucoma using a passive resonator inside a contact lens. The condition occurs when the optical nerve is damaged by an increase in intraocular pressure inside the eye, and one of the challenges with existing methods is that it can be invasive and inaccurate due to natural fluctuations of pressure throughout the day. The Glacolens offers a way to track the IOP continuously for 24 hours or more, automatically sending the data to eye doctors for analysis. This offers the promise of a new way to save people's vision with early detection. In related data gathering news, researchers at the University of British Columbia have been testing their smart sensing gloves on a group of stroke patients. Woven into it are a range of pressure sensors that can track even the smallest hand and finger movements, accurately determining the angles of finger joints and the wrist as they move. In this instance, the test group used the gloves during stroke rehabilitation, and the idea is that they can quickly and objectively figure out the capabilities of the patients to tailor rehab exercises that aid recovery and maximize the chances of restoring the use of their limbs. The team has also been exploring how these gloves could be used to automatically translate sign language. Moving over to prosthetics and Open Bionics announced that a partial hand amputee from London has become the first person to trial their new 3D printed prototype, restoring some use of his hand 30 years after the amputation. 50-year-old teacher Suleiman Chohan explained in a video how when he lost the use of his right hand, he was given a heavy dummy latex hand that had no function, so he just stopped wearing it. With this prototype, dubbed the Hero Gauntlet, Suleiman has now regained the ability to do many tasks that most of us take for granted, like carrying shopping bags, chopping vegetables, gripping the handlebars to ride a bicycle, or holding a smartphone. This distributed manufacturing approach means that people are 3D printing and building these type of prosthetics all over the world. Another story that popped up recently was how Bolivian engineer Roli Mamani is helping those who have lost limbs in work accidents. A toy maker by trade, Roli is designing custom robotic prosthetics for locals, and since 2018, he's created over 400, delivering them either completely for free or at production cost. What a legend. Continuing with prosthetics and a new breakthrough may be coming that enables users to feel temperature in their limbs again. Researchers at EPFL in Switzerland have designed the mini-touch system, which takes existing prosthetics and adds temperature sensors to the fingertips, and a small thermally conductive pad to the inside that touches the end of their amputated limb. It then uses a recently discovered phenomenon called phantom heat, which is like phantom limb syndrome, but specifically for temperature. Since the end of the amputated limb continues to grow nerve endings, it essentially tricks the user's brain into thinking they're feeling temperature in the prosthetic's fingertips, all without any invasive surgery. After conducting various tests, they found that users could reliably tell the difference between hot and cold objects, even discerning the difference between materials like glass, copper and plastic. Moving over to artificial intelligence, and researchers at MIT have developed PRISM, two AI models that improve the early detection of pancreatic cancer. The system was trained on more than 5 million patient records, and PRISM detected 35% of early stage cancer cases, compared to only 10% with conventional methods. Similarly, an international research group led by Karolinska Institutet in Sweden has also demonstrated how an AI can analyse mammography screening images to find women who are at a high risk of developing breast cancer. Like the previous story, this model was trained on real-world mammogram data from around Europe, with the researchers discovering that the AI noticed unconventional patterns between images that humans might fail to spot. Switching back to 3D printing briefly, and here are two new processes that could change medicine. A recent study by the Vienna University of Technology has demonstrated a new way to grow cartilage using 3D printing, something that until now has been very challenging. The method they used involved nano 3D printing tiny spherical scaffolds, then injecting stem cells into them. Depending on how these scaffolds are arranged, the cells begin to spread into the desired shape. The scaffolds then degrade, essentially disappearing, leaving mechanically stable cartilage tissue that continues to mature. 
A similar approach is being used to create artificial blood vessels in engineered tissue, only this time in order to get it to work, researchers found that the scaffolds need to be made from ice derived from heavy water. These 3D printed ice templates are then embedded in a gelatin material and when exposed to UV light. This gelatin then hardens, the ice melts away, leaving behind realistic blood vessel channels. This is another piece of the puzzle that could eventually lead to artificial organs grown on demand for transplants. In other news, National University of Singapore researchers have developed ICE, a wearable device for the blind and visually impaired. Similar in nature to the frame glasses from last week, this little headset has a forward-facing camera and microphone with the processing and battery at the back. When the user presses a button on the temple, it takes a picture of what's in front of it and it will tell you what you're looking at. The user can also speak to the AI and ask follow-up questions too. And ending this week, let's finish with a related fascinating story. Reddit user Mr. Blind Guardian posted on the 3D printing subreddit recently explaining how he used various AI models to design a custom 3D model, something he's never been able to do before due to being completely blind. The workflow involved googling descriptions of dragons, then writing his own custom description and inputting it into Lunar AI to generate a draft 3D model. He'd then take a screenshot and feed it into ChatGPT, asking it what it thought it was looking at. He repeated this process until he got something he wanted, then exported the STL file. After importing into a slicer, he repeated the process of tinkering with settings, taking screenshots and asking ChatGPT what was visually going on, then with the help of a friend printed his new custom one-winged dragon model. Cool. Alright, that's it for this week. As always, all source links are in the description. Love you all. Bye.